So guys, good evening. Uh, I will try to do a five minutes talk about uh, reasoning on the web. <coughs> so basically today I'm going to talk, uh, talk about bringing reason to the web using the example of the project I'm working on now. I am come from Brazil. I'm doing an internship here at IPOL. IPOL is an image and privacy lab. It's a French Singaporean lab that works with assistive technologies using reasoning to the web, uh, uh, also uh, machine learning and other kind of intelligent approaches. But first, let me talk, before talking about reasoning, let me talk about what exactly we were doing in my project. We are trying to propose something for ambient assisted living. What is exactly what is ambient assisted living? Basically, try to think about your grandmother living alone in his home, in her <coughs> home. We are proposing some assistive technologies to support her independently as long as possible inside home. And once he needs, she needs to go to the retirement house or nursing homes, we provide some services and some technologies to improve their lives there. So what exactly we propose to ambient assisted living? A smart houses. What are the three powers of our project? Sensing, basically we have a lot of sensors at home and also a lot of sensors at, at, at the, the room in the retirement houses. Sensors like motion sensors, bad sensors, and bad sensors. We put everything, this, this data, uh, we set all the data using Hasper Pies. So we have a Hasper Pie for each house and also for each retirement room. We set all this data for our server. We have a cloud-based server. Why? Because we want to have a lot of houses being monitored for our system. In our server, we have a reasoning approach that trying to identify the activities of the users based on events that we sense from sensors and provide some services based on these activities. Let me give you an example. If your grandmother is uh, it's like uh, cooking for a long time, maybe it means that something is wrong. You should notify the family or you should notify the doctors. Or try to think if we identify that your grandmother falls down on the floor. We should call the doctors, we should call the caregiver, we should call also the family. Let me talk about what about resume. Uh, we have a web-based system, but our focus is basically research and reasoning. What is exactly reasoning? The idea is to, given a bunch of events, a sequence of events, we should identify what kind of thing we should have, we should do uh, in response of these events. Like the, my 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 grandmother falls down on the floor. We identify that uh, based on the, the shape of the, the, the body. And then I propose to call or to notify the caregivers. Why do we do this? We have a knowledge-based driven reasoning using semantic web. So we are on the web. We use the representation of data of use uh, semantic web and a knowledge-based driven reasoning. We use the notation tree. It's a notation for semantic web. For inferency, for identified activities of the user, we use LRI reasoner. It's a basic, it's a rule-based one. And also we have ontological representation of the environment. So we have a knowledge representation of, of the house and of the user. What is exactly? It's ontology. This name is really crazy. Basically, it's ontology is just a graph of things. Let me think about Internet of Things. We are doing, we are putting semantic web concepts and Internet of Things and providing services for our people. Basically, ontology is a graph of things. It, it, it defines it for triples. What is exactly triples? It's how we represent data in a semantic web. Basic triples is a thing. How I can represent a thing? We have a subject, a predicate, and an object. Basically, on this kind of concept, I can say that a predicate and a triple is a thing. So we have a lot of things and representation of things in our ontology. Let me show you one example of this. That's, see, this is really meaningful. Here it's an ontology, it's how we represent data in our system, how we represent data in semantic web. It's important to say that each thing in semantic web has a URI. Each predicate, each subject, each object, object has your own URI. So this data is open, so you can take this data as well. Here I can show you the URIs, so we have uh, this representation, and here the representation of the triple. So I can say a house is a class. A house is a subclass of environment. A house, one is a house. So a uh, kitchen, it's a type of kitchen. And uh, this uh, instance of kitchen is part of the house. So we represent, we design our whole data using triples, saying this 
is this and this. So it's easy. Uh, subject, predicate, and object. And this is an example of rules. I told you that we have a reasoning based on rules. So we have the data, and then we also we need the rules. Basically, what's the rule? We define one sequence of events that happens, and also you define a consequence of these events. For example, you identify, identify that your, your grandmother is in the bathroom for 30 minutes, and also it's more than midnight. So we have two events. And two events, you have a consequence of that. What are the concepts? Maybe notify the family, notify the doctors. But we have to bring this for the web. Basically, we have two packages that we need to install. iServer and triple store not, not, and 3 gs All of them were made for Huben Verboff. It's a Belgian researcher in semantic web. Basically, I, it's a desktop-based reasoner. But you can bring it for the internet, basically using the iServer. It's an NPM package for Node.js. So you can bring it, and also you can bring the concept of semantic web using the triple store. How to access the triple store, how to handle this data using node.n3.js. As I, the idea is to discuss about research, obviously, we researchers, we love schemas, we love to, to, this, to draw architectures and generic ideas. So this is our approach. Basically, our reasoning approach to the interactivity of the user is quite, is, quite, uh, is quite heavy. We have a lot of steps. But I bring to you something that it's simple, that you can put in your application if you want. Do you want an intelligence your application? Do you want a rule-based reasoning in your application? Do you think that it's important for you to infer data based on, on, on data that you have? OK, we can try to do this using DC schema. We have input. Basically, you have a put handler to handle the input that you have. You have the cortex. Cortex is the main idea of your reasoner. You, you get this data uh, and put this data in a triple store. Triple store, basically, it's our uh, the store of the data that we have. Once you get this data from the triple store, you can send it to the reasoning. What my reasoning needs to have to infer data, to understand, to infer data based on the rules, you just need to get the rules that you already designed it, and the data that you have, and send it to the reasoner. And what your reasoner will do? Basically, he will infer data. My, ma my, ma my grandmother is in the kitchen for 15 minutes, and he, uh, the television is on. So this is your data. Where's the rule? If my mother is in uh, the kitchen more than 10 minutes, and the television is on, please call the car giver, because Probably we have a critical situation and we have a, a warning situation. And this is the model that we should follow if you want to implement to bring this intelligence for your application. And then tutorials. If you're really interested to go through on that, take a look at these tutorials. All of them is based on a semantic web and reasoning and also made for the Belgian guy that told you, the researcher. Thank you very much. I'm Joao. If you have some doubts about Reasoner, I just try to give you a generic idea of that. But I have a lot of things to do, a lot of things to discuss. And thank you very much. Uh, good. One question. You mentioned the edge nodes, right? So are you doing processing and everything on the edge nodes? Or are you pushing out the data to the cloud and Oh, exactly. Let, let me show you the, the, the last uh, one picture here, 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 here. This one is cool. So basically, we have two sides in our system. The house side, <coughs> there is the sensors that we have. Okay. Uh, we centralize the sending of sensors in our Raspberry Pi. So the, the information of the motion of the doors, sensors of the bed sensor, it's centralized in our Raspberry Pi, and we send it to the cloud. And in the cloud, it's centralized. We have a centralized reasoning approach. So we get this data, we process this data, we put in the semantic web stuff using triple stores, and then we send this to our reasoning and get some results, like a notification. So you're having a lot of data that's captured on the Yes, a lot of data. problem with this latency of data because you're sending it to the cloud, right? Not yet. So do you yeah. Now our first uh, prototype, we have a nursing home in France uh, with uh, 20 rooms, and until now we don't have, we didn't have any problems with a bunch of data, with, uh, with the quantity of data. But we are concerned about it because our next prototype will be 
20 homes and 20 nurse homes, 20 rooms in the nurse home. So uh, we, we should think about, to think about how to handle the bank of data. Actually, we didn't think about it yet, but it's a good thing. Yeah, but we have one transfer file for house, so it's pretty okay. Uh, we didn't have any problems with that. Maybe the problem we sent all of the data to the cloud and process everything to Just one more quick question. <coughs> uh, how exactly do you determine the rules? Is it based on like per patient or and does it learn and change over time? This is a good question. Now, in our first prototype, we are not learning about the the user yet. What we do, we design some rules, for basically, okay? We run some experiments in the nursing room, uh, check with the nurses and the car dealers and the doctors if our rules uh, exactly address the activity that they want. One example, for during two days, we will monitor one uh, user and then check if the activities that the user did correspond to the activities that we inferred. So, actually, our work is really closer to the nurses and really closer to the doctors because we need to validate our approach. But basically, we designed the rules before we put them in the system. But now we don't have any learning, but the next PhD students we work on it. <laughs> we will be nice. And also, we have a, a really good project coming that's supposed to be my research in the PhD is to bring the system also for the cars. So we will be trying to infer the activity of the user in the car and provide service in the car. Okay, we'll, we'll quickly move forward for the next lightning talk. Uh -huh. yeah. Okay. So any question can, can talk later. Yeah, okay, they just finished with my email. So if I'm, someone wants to talk about it, I'm really interested. Jobbanks.gmail. Also, this slide will be available. I will share with you in the group. Okay? Thank you very much.